Hey guys, underrated Jimmy Broadbent on Ritalin Boy here, and welcome back to R Factor 2 for another video. I recently took the brand new McLaren Senna GTR around the Nordschleife for a couple of hot laps. Well, not so hot laps, and didn't really enjoy it too much. But since this car is going to be one of the replacements for the LMP1 class in endurance racing, I think it's only fair to test it in a proper endurance setting. So, today, I'll be doing an hour race at the Circuit of the Americas against a full field of LMP2s, LMP3s and GTEs. Pole position, 60 minutes, green, green, green. Okay, so here we go at the Circuit of the Americas. Terrible rolling start. Left side. First down to third already, heading into the first corner, but we're trying to hang it around the outside. He's still there. Put the power down. We've got the inside line still here. There. Lift off just to Clear get the through the corner. Oh, he's got us. He's got us. It's a long race here today, though. One hour. Oops, slight tap on the car. Ahead of us, uh, seems to be parking it through the apex. Come on, Mr. AI. That's barely a scratch, mate. Just ignore it. Maybe he's trying to brake test us and slow us down. But we make it through the first few series of corners relatively unscathed. And now we get to uh, really wind the car up where it shines. Top speed. Take a nice light apex into the hip in here. And floor it onto clear. the straight. Build those revs. Build up that top speed. Well and truly in the slipstream of the car ahead. We're going to try and not lock the brakes going into the hip in here. Very easy to do that in this car. No ABS. Minor lock up there. I think we got away with it without too much damage to the tyres. Oh, he's going defensive. We're going to try the cutback again. Lots of understeer in this McLaren Senna GTR. I'll try my best to dial it out with the setup as best I can. But it still just wants to go in a straight line. Corners are not this car's friend. As the car ahead of us gets on the brakes again. He's very nervous on the brakes, this Mr. AI. Give me a few frights on so far left. this lap. Just parks it on the apex again. See so right. we can get him going into the right. last corner. Got him. Got him. So we actually only end up losing one place on the first lap here. From first down to second. But the gap to the car ahead is around about three or four seconds. Which isn't is great. The gap behind is now 0 0.21. On your left. Left side's clear. Oh, I could see him in the mirror. He's going for oh, a little cheeky left. dive bomb there. Still there. Chicken me out of it. He's still with you. He's still on the Clear outside. Left. Oh, I'm not going to give it up that easy. All this is doing is allowing the leader to get away from us, though. Definitely seem to have the upper hand on the AI through these sweeping corners. Which is saying quite something, because I feel like I'm just driving terribly. Ah, run a little bit wide there. Gap the cars behind us nicely now. Pulled out a second or so already. Nice and tight to the apex. And floor it again. The speed in this car is just absolutely incredible. It just accelerates so quickly. 300k. But yeah, very, very easy to get drawn into the light braking in this car. It really doesn't like it. The brakes don't match the speed. So you think you can brake a lot later than you actually can, you just end up locking the brakes. I'm plowing on in the corners. I've got a feeling that my tyres are going to be quite bumpy by the end of this race. Considering it's an hour, I don't think I'll have to stop for fuel, so these tyres might have to do me to the end. I've I should really be taking much, much better care of them than I am. <laughs> yeah, these are the softest of the tyres available. Plenty of grip, full tank of fuel, and they do still seem to be uh, hanging on nicely. The gap in front is now 3.3. That was a uh, 156.85. The gap behind is now 3.2. No one trying to 
fake a dive bomb up the inside there into turn one, so I can actually take the apex for once. Starting to get into rhythm around this course. It's very much a rhythm based course, of course. Of course! One corner leading directly into the next. If you get one wrong through this first section, it just compounds. It really does compound. You find yourself offline. It's very, very satisfying when you do get it right, though. Anyway, onwards with the race. We're now on lap three. On the back straight, we are kind of uh, holding on to the leader. We've dropped third place massively. Although one thing you will see, especially over the course of the next few laps and later in the race, is the traffic. We are running a full field here. 36 cars, I believe. GTEs of all different shapes and sizes, as we miss that apex completely. LMP3s, LMP2s, and of course the LMHC McLaren Senna, the supercar category. So with being the fastest class on track, as we miss that apex again completely, I think I've missed more apexes than I've made so far. <laughs> but yeah, we're, we are going to run into the GTs pretty soon. I think some of them are in the pits already. The ahead is now 2.2 seconds. That's the fastest lap of the race. You've just done a 156.25. The gap behind is now 5.5 seconds. <laughs> Pretty sure I'm going to be safe on fuel for this race as well. I'm still working out the fuel usage, so I have absolutely tanked the car. And I am running it in qualifying mode. I'll do some maths about halfway through the race and see how I'm going. Whether I need to start kicking into some fuel saving or not. And that is something that this car does have, is adjustable fuel mixtures. So if you do need to turn the engine down into, into lean mode, save a bit of fuel, you can. Oh, missed the brakes there completely. I thought we were getting a lot closer to the leader then. And we're going to throw it all away. Now there is a DRS sign on the dashboard here in the car. And there is a DRS sign on the side of the track, but I don't actually think... I have DRS available to me. Jeez, this car just does not want to brake. B2. I think I might tap the rear brake bias. Or I might tap the brake bias a bit more towards the rear. It does feel like it's very stable in the braking. But I'm locking the fronts a lot. So hopefully a few clicks towards the rear could help the balance of the car. But the more laps I do, the more I'm starting to get in tune with this thing. I mean, I did drive it in the Nordschleife in the one of my previous videos and I didn't really enjoy it it just wasn't very satisfying to drive at all it was frustrating you know it was now I think I'm kind of getting used to how it's meant to be driven the lap time was at 156.15 it's becoming a lot less frustrating I still wouldn't say it's enjoyable but I've got a handle on it I'm not throwing it in the fence every other corner The true test of this brake bias change though will be towards the herpins later on in the lap. And you can see how much faster I am than, than the guy ahead of me through the uh, through the S's here. Through the sweeping left right left right se sequence of corners. So much more speed. Although he does seem to have the legs on me towards the end of the uh, end of the circuit. And definitely under braking as well. All the way way closer than we've been at any point during the race now. Apart from the start, of course, when we uh, led the field away on pole. But we won't talk about that. That was a horrible start. You can hear the tyres complaining under the braking zone. Just at the limit of adhesion. I'm very conscious of uh, the extra speed from the slipstream here. 
and I will have to break earlier than even earlier before. Ah, way wide. So I'm just conscious of running into the back of him and overshooting the corner. Uh, he does seem to be struggling ahead of us now. We are closing up nicely. But you just got to be so patient with this car. It just feels like you're constantly waiting for it to grip, and it never does. But this looks like a lot closer than we've been before. Although the GTEs, surely they're not far away up the road now. We're setting the pace. That last lap was a 157.00. Car on your left side. Left side's clear. Way too late into the first corner again. With such a wide apex here at the uh, Turn 1 of Circuit of the Americas, you can take several different lines and you don't really lose that much time. You can afford to make a mistake and then use the cutback and gain the time back down the hill. It's a very expertly designed sequence of corners, this as well. The guy ahead of us, very ginger on the brakes. I think the AI could do with a little bit of tweaking here. I am running them at 115%. So not exactly slow. And the overall lap time isn't too bad from the... Uh, from the McLaren Senna GTR and the AI here, but they just get the get the speed in different areas. And they're definitely not getting it on uh, apex speed, that's for sure. The sky does look pretty dark. There's a few clouds uh, floating around at the moment. I don't think there was any uh, chance of rain, but then again, I didn't really. Don't remember checking too well before the start of the race. If it does start to rain, that'll that'll be uh, well, that'll that'll definitely spice things up. Hey, driving one of the most powerful, fastest cars in the world on a wet track where it's already not that grippy to begin with. To be completely sail wide in the turn eight esque right hander there. There we go, hit the apex, run a little bit wide, and floor it. Pace seems to have dropped off a bit now. Maybe the, the life the is out of the tyres. Maybe the initial life has definitely been used out of the tyres. The gap behind is now 10 seconds. There's definitely a characteristic here in R-Factor 2. Is that you get maybe two or three good laps at the start of the stint running a little bit wide there. You get two or three good laps at the start of the stint and then it kind of plateaus. It's very much temperature based as well. So it's not so much that you're pushing the car beyond the edge of grip, it's just once you start to get temperature in the tyres, it's very hard to get rid of it. And the more temperature you've got, the less grip you've got. So it's, it's the way the physics work here, it's kind of the colder you can keep the tyres, the better really. So obviously when you come out of the pits, your tyres are nice and freezing cold and they're going to be at their optimum grip. Not exactly the most realistic of, uh, of, of handling the physics, to be honest, but that's, that's just the way it works, so you've got to try and use it to your advantage. The more you slide the car, the more you lock the tyres, the more temperature you get. The more temperature you get, the less grip you've got. Ah, <laughs> perfect example there. The front right, well and truly locked up. Glowing bright red on the overlay. And of course that just limits the grip, it just wouldn't turn. Now we've lost all that advantage again. But you can see here, we're pretty much flat out and the tyres aren't getting too hot. So it's definitely the lockups and the sliding that's going to kill the tyres. That's the temperature inducing uh, temperature inducing faults here. So the more I become familiar with this McLaren Senna GTR, the more I start to realise it's it's all about being the smooth. Is now that lap was at 157.46. It's not a car that you can push at all. The gap behind is now 11 seconds. You try and push the car, then it gets slidey, you lock the tyres, get the temperature, lose the grip, no good. 
We just can't seem to get past this guy. We've got so much more speed in this section of the track. I'm just paranoid about running into the back of him. I don't want to do that. You know, 15 minutes into this race, about a quarter of the way through. Fuel's going well. Tires are hanging on nicely. And we're in a comfortable second position. The gap behind is solid 10, 11 seconds. We're yet to experience any of the traffic here. I would have thought the GTs would have been much closer by now. Whoa! There's a guy on your left. Clear left. Had to back out of it big time then. Thought I was going to run into the back of him. Lock brakes heading into the hairpin. And sometimes your brain just goes... Uh, yeah, that's 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 going to be a contact. <laughs> so I'd rather not tag straight into the back of uh, Walter Lucan ahead of us. Rather live to fight another day. No doubt we will get that that gap back in no time. Although not by running wide like that. I'm sure many, many better drivers than me will be able to drive this car a lot more consistently and quickly. That lap was a 157.94. And maybe I will be able to with a little bit more practice. I mean, of course, over the over the duration of this race, let's just see how it goes, see how the tyres go, see how my actual consistency goes as well. And something this is definitely going to give me. I've got a feeling it's going to give me very soon as well, is an appreciation for lapping traffic. Because here comes the GTEs. You can start to see the back of the field ahead of us. I think we've got a few Corvettes. Car ahead. There we go. Thank you, Mr. Spotter. About 17 minutes into the race. We're about to start lapping some traffic. And this could be our opportunity. We can use the slower cars to... Uh, Take advantage. There goes the new oh, Aston right, behind right. us. We're getting closer. Oh, I thought about sending one up the inside, but that was never going to work. The Porsche right. cuts ahead of me on the apex. Here on the right. All right, Dan. Slower cars ahead. These guys will be fighting for position. They might not see you. Oh, I thought he was going to cut back across me then. Car on your left side. Left side's clear. Lost a heap of time there. Left side, there's a car. You are clear on the left. Oh, the leader's getting held up. We're going to go left to the side. inside. You're on the right side, three wide. Going to split the middle. Car left. Left side's clear. Got him. That's the stuff. We'll have some more of that. Got him. <laughs> well, that's that's one way to pass right the side. Michael. <laughs> clear right. Thank you very much, GTEs. He went to the left, I went to the right, we got him around the inside. And now we are in the lead of the race, with a clear track ahead of us. Well, Keep doing what you're doing, this is spot on. You're now in the lead. The gap behind is now 2.4. For the moment, at least, anyway, it's a clear track. I doubt it'll stay that way for long. It's once we start making our way through the traffic. Of course, there's GTEs to pass, which we're dealing with at the moment. There will also be the LMP3s, and then the LMP2s. I doubt we'll lap any of the other McLaren centers in this race unless they are chronically slow. And that's of course if the rain doesn't come into the uh, into the equation either. The sky is definitely looking a little bit greyer now. Right. Clear track ahead of us. Really gonna get my head down and concentrate. Fuel looks good as well. Nearly a third of the way through the race now. We've used nowhere near a third of the fuel. So I'm going to turn it all the way up. Qualifying mode for the rest of the race, which should give us a little bit of extra oomph down the straights. Slower class car ahead. Although, we immediately do that. We take the extra top speed and lock up the tyres, because <laughs> I forgot to brake earlier. Gently does it, roll it in, clunk the curb on the inside, catch the curb on the outside. 
And now we pass the Heisingvelt neon red ooh, BMW all the way around the outside. He's not of the track to get around the, the traffic there. That was a nice apex. I think it's the best I've ever done that corner over the course of this race. Oh wow, the LMC. LM, LMHC, sorry. The gap behind is now 3.7 seconds. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say, Mr. Spotter. Looks like P2 got held up in that traffic, which dropped him by about 3 seconds. Which is good for me. We're probably not too good. For those of you who are watching, you want an exciting race. Can get this guy around the outside. Right side's clear. Now becomes the inside. Minimal time lost. Obviously not the optimal racing line, but still, not too bad. As we now rise over the top of the hill and back down the hill again. Such a fantastic circuit. What's the gap? It's about two seconds. I can hear the Porsche ahead of me, but I can't hear the center behind right me. Side. Clear right. That's another car dispatched. We're now on lap 11. Oh, maybe you need to start breaking up a bit early for that corner. Had some consistent lockups now. It's very conscious of damaging the tyres. There's so many corners on this track as well, which are uh, tightening radius. Like you got to brake, and you got to turn as well. Like there's not just like straight braking zones. Slower cars ahead. The class leaders in this group. These guys are scrapping for position. Better keep an eye on these GTs then. Don't want to get tangled up in an accident, especially with them leading the race. Looks like a nice battle between a Corvette and a BMW. On your right, clear on the right. On your right, clear on the right. We're quickest right now. That lap time was 156.69. The gap behind is now 4.4 seconds. Back into the 1 minute 56s. Uh, I think now we've cleared all of the GTEs. The LMP3s are going to be the next cars down the road. And there's not much of a difference in the pace between them. Historically the LMP3s... Ooh, run a little bit wide. Historically the LMP3s and the GTEs have been quite close battling out on track during the history of the uh, the VEC, the Virtual Endurance Championship. So I wouldn't expect to see them too far down the road. Looking to get the relative there. Looks like we've got about 12 seconds to them. So more than likely we will see the GTEs again at the end of the race. I know it's going to be touch and go whether they can make an hour on the fuel. The LMP2s will definitely have to stop. And the LMP3s might be able to make the full race. I know the Senna, which I'm driving now, does seem to be exceptionally good on fuel. So I should be able to make it to the end of the race without a need for a pit stop. And of course, all of these cars, bar the LMP3, are being used this season in the VEC, the Virtual Endurance Championship. So it'll be interesting, this is quite a mix of fuel strategies. Your LMP2s are quite thirsty. You need a pit stop every 45 minutes or so. Your GTEs pit stop every hour-ish. Oh, way too late on the brakes there. We're gonna run super wide. Scruffy, scruffy driving. And yeah, the McLaren Senna could probably get much more than an hour out of a tank. Well done, Dan. This is terrific. Exactly what we came here for. We're quickest at the moment. That lap was at 156.78. The gap behind is now 5.8. So we're definitely dropping P2. It's just hours to lose now. And now that I've said that, of course we are going to lose it. <laughs> Commentator's curse is strong in this one. But overall, how's the car feeling? The car feels good. The car feels nice and grippy. Which is strange for me to say. I think maybe 
Maybe with the fuel coming down, it's it's coming it's coming alive, you know. It's definitely starting to come alive. Coming up on a slower car. Compared to the Star Race when it was on a full tank, it wasn't too lively. As we lap the first of the LMP3s. Right, right Proceed to lock up the brakes nicely. I think that's my signature move here at Austin, guys. Definitely starting to get quite dark in the sky, though. Grey clouds all about. And track temperatures down at, what, 26 or something? Which is in stark contrast to the room which I'm recording this race in right now. Summer is officially hitting Brisbane today. Oh, well, the start of summer at least anyway, what well, feels like it. Approaching 40 degrees outside. <sighs> I'd be lying if I said I uh, wasn't sweating in this room right now. We're currently set in the base. <laughs> that lap time was 157.00. The gap behind is now 5.7 seconds. Although you could argue I'm just going for maximum simulation. You know, recreating the uh, internal temperature of the car. I do very much think a cool suit would be a great idea right now. I don't even have a drinks button installed. <laughs> so I'll have a nice big drink of water after the end of this race, rehydrate. Maybe even an ice bath, Pierre Gasly style. All about reining this car in now. Gap to the car behind is 8 seconds. We are gapping Walter very nicely, actually. I don't think he's getting through the traffic as easily as we are. You're coming upon some slower cars. These guys are busy fighting. They might not notice you. Now, of course, these guys are obligated to give up the positions, but they are not obligated to move out of the way. The general uh, rule of the road in endurance racing with multi-class on your left. You're clear on the left. Is that the faster class has to find a way past. The slower cars more than more than entitled to stick to the racing line because they've got less grip, you know? It's not very fair of them. There's a car right. You are clear on the right. On your right. To be giving up the position, putting Still themselves working. out of line. Right side's clear. When they're already at maximum right. grip through right. half of these corners. Yeah. Obviously myself in a in a hypercar, much more grip. I have the ability to drive around the outside. You're in the lead. So the onus is definitely on me the is making the safe move. Six. Although saying that, I gotta have some kind of aggression, otherwise I'd just be stuck behind them all day. And that's one of the one of the joys of endurance racing is dealing with that challenge. Obviously in single make series like you know your Formula Ones and your Indy cars. You get lap traffic. Uh, there, I can't even speak. You get lapped traffic, but it's kind of, you know, you're all in the same race. And I know that here in endurance racing, we are technically all in the same race, but there's four different races going on at the same time, and there's an overall position standing, you know. So overall position, but then positioning class, which you don't get in your single make series, so. There's these races within a race, and you've, ju you've just got to try and make your way around everyone. It's it's, oh, it's what I love about endurance racing. It's one of the reasons I'm absolutely loving taking part in the VLMC this year as well. Virtual Le Mans Cup. It's part of the Sim Racing Club. It's the uh, feeder series to the VEC, the Virtual Endurance Championship. And I'm actually racing against other humans. As opposed to the AI, which I'm racing against now. I mean, nothing against racing against the AI, of course. Ooh, bit wide. Especially the AI here in our factor too, which is some of the best in the business. I mean, race room comes pretty close as well. 
but being able to race against actual humans with actual reactions and personalities is just absolutely fantastic and uh, oh I'm loving it guys okay Dan we're matching race pace you've just done a 157.00 the pace is starting to uh, drop off a little bit now, down into the 57s. If I can get back into the 56s, that'll be nice as the fuel starts to come down. Yeah, going back to my previous point about the VLNC, racing for Zancho. Just, it's it's great. That's half distance, the fuel's okay. I will be live streaming every race this season. Big thanks to Sean Jacobs and uh, Jimmy Allison for arranging that. And I'll make sure I put a link in the description as to when the next race is, because I will be live streaming all of them as well. Obviously with these AI offline races, I do like to uh, do like to record them in my own time. Just edit them together after the fact, do an intro here, do an intro there, that kind of thing. You know, it's more of my own pace. But when it comes to the real racing, guys, that's always going to be a live stream. And that's the direction that I want to take this channel in. And I hope it's a direction that you guys want it to be taken in as well. Because I wouldn't have a channel if it wasn't for you guys. You keep on coming back, you keep on watching these videos. And I just can't say thank you enough, seriously. Really appreciate it, guys. If you are enjoying this race, if you're still stuck with me at the half hour mark, and you're enjoying what you see, you're liking the McLaren Center at the Circuit of the Americas, and don't forget to give the video a like, and share your thoughts in the comments. Anything caught your eye so far? Awesome stuff mate, keep it coming, that's the fastest lap. Your lap time was at 155.38. Anything caught your eye so far apart from that 1 minute 55 that came out of absolutely nowhere? Uh, yeah, let me know. I do my best to respond to Ooh, every single comment as I completely just take liberties with the apex. But yeah, I do my best to respond to everybody who posts on my videos. You know, you've taken the time to say hi to me. I'm going to take the time to say hi back. And if you want to see more content, then press that big old red subscribe button that's just below the video on the right hand side. And press that notification bell as well. Because when the, when you do that... Slower car ahead, this guy's the class leader. You get a little alert. Every time I upload a video, every time I schedule a live stream and go live, you get a little pop-up that says, Hey, DDF Racer's just, just done something. And if you're a fan of this channel, if you enjoy what you see, why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you want to know when I'm doing stuff, you know? Just, just saying. <laughs> We now approach the leader of the LMP3 class. Looks like the uh, the sun is starting to dip slightly in the sky now as it gets later in the day. It was a 4 p.m. race start time local time here. The time progression set to normal time progression. So we'll be approaching 5 p.m. by the end of the race as we go around the outside of the LMP3 leaders. Looks like we got a Porsche here ahead of us now. It looks like he's out of position. Came up to lap him for the second time by the looks of things. Mr. Fred Dino in the Porsche. Go to the inside. Right side. Right side's clear. Give him plenty of space. That last lap was at 157.25. You're coming up on a slower class car. Still getting to grips with this. The gap behind is now 8.6. But the more I drive it, the more it's warming to me. Maybe my video at the Nordschleifer, I don't know. Just didn't do it justice. Maybe it's a slow burner, this one. It's like an album that you, you know, you listen to it once or twice, you think, mm, nah, I don't like this. All right. Right. And then it just keeps on coming on your playlist. You keep on listening to it in the car and then you think, actually, this is really good. Maybe the McLaren Senna GTR is more like that. It's a slow burner. It's a grower. On your right, the right side's clear. Car on your right side, clear right. But yeah, my initial impressions weren't great. I think now I'm getting very familiar with the uh, limits of the car. 
pushing the time of the car as well, down into 1 minute 55.3s. It seems like shifting down at lower okay, revs definitely cars. helps as These well. Guys are busy fighting. They might not notice you. That's definitely helping with the lockup situation. So I'm going to make a concerted effort to shift down at lower revs from now on. One thing I do miss in my uh, offline recorded videos compared to the uh, live streams that I do is not having the voice of Ed Trevelyan left Johnson in my, in my ears, giving me right advice, side, right side Slower class car ahead. V often very uh, direct and honest advice <laughs> on where I can improve, where I'm going wrong, and I'm sure if he's watching this video right now, that, that was at 158.25, so just 1 and 3 are 0 0.6 off the pace. 6 to 2 is 0 0.39 off the pace. The gap behind is now 10 seconds. I'm sure if he's watching this video right now, he'll be cringing. Although, I shouldn't be too disappointed. I am currently in the lead of the race, with a nice healthy gap to the car behind. No pit stop in sight, tyres are hanging on nicely. Just making our way through the traffic, just going for a nice Sunday drive. I do have a newfound respect though, for the guys who have decided to race this car in the, uh, the VEC this season. Because I have no idea how you get the lap times you do out of the car. Although I suppose that's what makes you the top tier level sim racers that you are. And that I one day aspire to be. Just ticking off the laps now here at the Circuit of the Americas. We're on lap 19. With about 23 minutes to go in the race. We've made our, through, uh, made our way through the majority of the pack. Slower class car ahead. So we've lapped all of the GTEs and we're lapping some of them again. We've lapped our way through the LMP3s and we do have an LMP2 about four Set seconds the down the road. Go on your right, clear on the right. That lap time was 155.70. Actually, my bad. Those LMP2s were in the pits. So now we start to lap some of the LMP2s now. as well. Seconds. Definitely starting to see a lot more rubber come down on the track now. The grip is ramping up. The fuel is coming down. And this thing still understeers like a pig. Look, not a... Uh, I'm not really sure what kind of apex I was aiming for there, guys. Definitely wasn't the right one. Oh, that felt pretty good. Slower cars ahead. These guys are busy fighting each other. Ah, way too wide. That's the problem with that corner. Once you go wide. For fuck's sake, Dan. Track limits. Come on. Steady on, Mr. Spot. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> Although I suppose I do have to keep an eye on the cut tracks. If I run wide and violate track limits too many times, I might actually get a penalty. And that undoes all, right. all of the good work. We're quickest at the moment. 
Right side, clear on the right. That was a 156.49. Must run into the right. back of the traffic there. Come on, Dan. Concentrate, mate. Too busy looking at the uh, the, gap behind is now 14 the lap seconds. time on the uh, heads-up display inside the VR headset. You're coming up on a slower car. That would have been a horrible accident. A very embarrassing accident as well that would have cut this video short. It's definitely giving me a wake-up call that I need for the concentration. Okay, so I'm being honest with you guys, my concentration is starting to waver a little bit. The heat here oh, on your right side. in right side this room clear. is incredible. I'll be jumping straight in a cold shower as soon as I finish this video, no doubt. It's currently 3 p.m. local great. time, peak Come of the afternoon. Those exits. That's 20 minutes to go. Trust me, it's stinking hot, guys. 20 minutes to go in this race. And I could probably do two hours on these set of tyres. Like, they're just holding on so well. Makes you wonder, the uh, the medium and the hard tyres would be absolutely redundant in this car, I'm sure. They just never wear out. You could probably do a quadruple stint. Maybe even five stints, I don't know. Because I could definitely do a double stint on these softs. And I've been very unkind to them. <laughs> As you can hear from the tyre squeals in the background and the red tyres on the overlay in the bottom left of the screen. Your lap time was 156.93. And even though it feels like I'm driving absolutely terribly. The behind is now 14 seconds. Coming up on a slower class car. Even though it feels like I'm driving terribly. Somehow I'm still managing to pump out 1 minute 56s. Making our way through some more GTE traffic. There's a car right. Clear right. On your right. You are clear on the right. That was a bit optimistic. Ooh. Oh, on your right. The leader of the GTEs. Alright Dan, you've got half your fuel left. Well and truly getting in the way. Nevin Marcus in the yellow Corvette there. Sorry if I ruined your race, mate, but you looked like you were going to the inside, and I didn't really particularly want to get caught up in a crash 17 minutes from the end of this race. Especially when we're in the overall lead with a, what was it, a 15 second lead, Mr. Spotter said. Yeah, sorry if it's not been the most exciting one today, guys. You can't all be winners, unfortunately. Un un unless you are a winner. <laughs> Which might be the case today. Don't want to count it too soon. I don't want to tempt fate. Definitely don't want to tempt fate by saying that we're going to win the race. We've still got a quarter left to go. Yeah, I think this car definitely drives a lot better on low fuel. A lot better on low fuel. seems to have so much more grip compared to the start of the race. But then again, I suppose that would make sense if the tyres aren't really wearing down. You know, because the grip's still available. The temperatures aren't too high. You can just keep on pounding round. So I think this is one of these cars that is going to get faster the longer you go in the stint. Normally it plateaus and then drops off towards the end, but this might actually be a car that picks up pace as you get in the race. 
which is a very strange thing to see. It seems to be something that goes against the uh, convention of modern racing, especially for those of you who follow Formula One. So used to seeing a car come in for tyres, blast it for a couple of laps, and then just never quite get back to that same pace again. Although saying that, the understeer still is incredibly, incredibly present in this car. As we head through the final corner here with the circuit of the Americas, are we on for our personal best lap of the race? We've got a good exit out of the final corner, we're about a tenth up, we might be back into the 1 minute 55s. That's the fastest lap of the race, you've just done a 155.22, sector 2 is 0 0.06 off the pace. Okay Dan, 15 minutes left, that's 15 minutes, keep it up, we're looking good here. So now it's all about making no mistakes, sailing it on in towards the end of the race. The gap behind is now 23 seconds. Got a 23 second lead, wow. I feel like this has been way too easy. Although I can only really knock the AI up another 5%. We are running at 115% difficulty at the moment, and the most you can actually get out of our factor 2 is 120. Even with that, I don't think we would have had much more of a challenge in this race. I mean, it was difficult getting past P2 at the start. I mean, we made a terrible rolling start. Timed it completely wrong. But then once we actually got past him, we've just been able to sail away. And I'm not being a particularly good driver today, so... <laughs> Perfect case in hand there, as we just take all the track and then some. But yeah, if I was to actually practice this car and get good... Then... I could be another couple of seconds faster easy. And that's not me being, um... Being all braggy. I just genuinely think that if I... Tied it all together, I could be a couple of seconds faster. So I'm commentating while I'm driving. And my focus isn't really 100% on the race. This is good. Keep banging out them lap times. We're quickest right now. You've just done a 155.38. So it's a bit of a worry. Maybe it's the AI around this circuit. Because I know that some circuits are better than others. When it comes to AI performance. And I know... We've definitely got the advantage in this sequence of corners here. They were getting on the brakes the at the apex before. But even then, it wasn't like slamming on. It was just a little tap here and there. Just to, just to reduce the speed. But maybe the AI needs a bit of tweaking around this circuit, the America circuit. And that's one of the things that does actually gripe me about R-Factor 2. Yeah, the AI is amazing. And yeah, there's so much content out there. But not all of the content is optimised well, unfortunately. Like, this is a third-party track, and it's an amazing third-party track. The level of detail is really good. Just, it's just great to drive. It looks good. Up on a slower class car. Performance is good. And on the whole, yeah, 9 out of 10. But maybe the AI could do with a little bit of a tweak, I guess. So we've now got an LMP3. Ahead of us, taking up all of the roads. Get them on the exit, hopefully. There we go. All right. All right. He's got the headlights on, so it's definitely starting to get dark here in the circuit of the Americas. But yeah, that's one of the things that just gripes me about RF2 sometimes. It's very inconsistent. I mean, for online racing, this would be perfect, but. For the offline stuff, maybe not so much. And that's where I tend to steer over towards race room in these kind of situations when you want nice, consistent AI. You don't have to worry about between track to track. Because if I was to, for example, go to Lime Rock Park in these cars, which... <laughs> could you imagine that? That would be absolutely insane. But if I was to go to Lime Rock Park in these cars, at 115% AI, 
I would get absolutely demolished. If I was to go to Silverstone at 115% in these cars, I'd get absolutely demolished. Sebring. I'd be lucky to even keep up with the pace at 101%. And that's... It's just... Track to track is inconsistent. You can't just... You can't just jump in and go driving, unfortunately. You have to tweak it. You have to make sure your settings are right. So for every video that you see, there's probably about another hour, two hours worth of behind the scenes work just to get the graphics Slower configured per track. And to get the uh, AI configured per track. And just to generally just make sure it all works. Ten minutes to go. That's ten minutes left. Ooh. Your left. Still there. What are you doing, left mate? GT just turned in on us. Right side. Right side's clear. Leonard Janik in the Aston Martin GTE. Cheeky, cheeky move there, mate. And we got some damage to the front left. Yeah, it doesn't really want to turn too well now. Okay, Dan. There's a group of slower cars ahead. These guys are busy fighting each other. Quite clearly had the inside line there. And maybe a curry carried. All right, right side's clear. Right. A little bit Clear more epic right. speed. That guy should have also been checking the mirrors right. as well. On the right. We should be okay. The car's not crabbing in a particular direction. It's not that turning. But it's definitely not going to help the pace, that's for sure. I suppose the saving grace is that we've only got about 10 minutes of this race left to go now. We are in the final stretch. All I need to do is hold it on the island. We have a commanding lead. The gap behind is now 25 seconds. Right on cue there, Mr. Spotter. Thank you very much. And if you are still sticking with the race up until this point, then I commend you. You are a true hardcore fan. Thank you very much for sticking with it and watching. It's not been the most exciting or the greatest of races today. Not much has happened, but hopefully it gives you a bit more of an idea on this McLaren Senna GTR. Of what it's like to drive, of how it goes through traffic. My opinion's definitely swaying. I am warming to the car. You're approaching a group of slower cars. I'm not sure if I'd still choose it over Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I choose it by preference. Like, I don't think I'll do many more races on this channel in this car. All right. As we get completely boxed in by the Porsche 912 ahead of us. You're on the left, free wide. The right side's clear. Take them all around the outside. LMP3 getting past the GTE. And myself getting past both of them at the same time. Yeah, okay, going back to my previous point. I'm not sure if I'd race this car much by choice again on this channel. Right side. Right side's clear. I might do a Le Mans race perhaps, see how we feel. But it just doesn't really just add anything for me. Anyway, I'm going to be quiet now guys. I'm going to really concentrate for this lap because I think we've got some clear track ahead of us. So let's see if we can get back into the 1 minute 55s. Seconds. Last car ahead.
Friendly on the left. Had to take avoiding action on the LMP3 car then on the outside of the track, but I don't think we got a penalty for it. Well done, Dan. You're looking really good. Come on, keep your focus. Fastest lap. That was a 154.50. We're now down into the 1 minute 54s. Wow. I told you guys I could go a couple of seconds quicker if I really concentrated. I think a 1 minute 53 is possible. 1 minute 53 is definitely possible. That's 5 minutes remaining. We can win this. Be right. Understatement of the race there, Mr. Spotter. Right side. We can win this. Still there. Clear right. The gap behind is now 30 seconds. We're a 30 second lead to the second place. We are storming away with it. Wow. I could definitely make up another half a second on that faster slap, I think. That LMP3 in the final section really cost us. I might see if I can get that lap before the end of the race. We've got four minutes left now. So maybe a couple of laps at best. As the sun starts to go down here at the Circuit of the Americas, Austin, Texas. I'll tell you what guys, it's the first time I've ever really driven this track in a proper sim. And I say proper sim because I have driven this track before in, uh, I think it was F1 2013, the game maybe? But I'm not counting that sim. That doesn't count. <laughs> Okay, three and a half minutes to go. We're quickest right now. Your lap time was 156.28. Sector 2 is 0 0.42. Off the pace. Slower class car ahead. So I reckon we got a couple of laps left maybe. As so we're now approaching some more GTEs. Hopefully we can get this guy around the outside and dispatch All him nice right. and quick. Clear on the right. So much more grip compared to the other cars. The gap behind is now 31 seconds. Although I suppose that's the benefit of running the fastest class car. You are going to have that advantage, and it's up to you to make your way around the traffic. There's a car right. Right side's clear. There's a car on your right. There is right nothing clear. more satisfying than the feeling of weaving your way through a dense field of traffic safely. Keyword there being safely. Anyone can weave their way through traffic and have an accident in the process, but when it all comes together, it just makes you feel like the boss. It really does. You're coming up on a slower car. So I'm just going to take a peek at my fuel readings for a second. Let's see what we've got. about 36 litres of fuel. We're using just shy of 3 litres a lap. And don't forget this is on qualifying mode as well. I realised quite early on in the piece that I'd massively over tanked it. All right. You're right. And turned it up into qualifying mode to get the most out of the pace. So I think in the future I should really look at my calculations a lot more carefully. One more lap. Keep it together. We'll win this. We're quickest at the moment. That lap was a 156.16. Oh, only a tenth right. off the 55s. On the right. And we are now on the last lap of the race. If it wasn't for Mr. Spotter reminding me, then I would just could have got just just in the groove. I would have forgotten about that. <laughs> Very much in the zone now. Now that I'm get into grips with this car it's very much hypnotic it really is you get used to the limitations and the shortcomings of the handling you know it's crap on the brakes you know that you've just got to be patient with the throttle you know that you've got to go way slower through the apexes than you think you are and once you get used to all that 
it's kind of trance-like. It really is. Like, I wouldn't say at any particular point in this race I've really been aggressive with the car. I felt like, you know, pushing it. I just... I've just been on edge. Well, not on edge. On edge is the wrong phrase. I've just been very conservative this race. And that's not to say that I think I could have gone much better than I have, because this whole thing's been a bit of a learning experience, jumping into the Star McLaren Center and doing my guys. first, well, more than three consecutive laps. It's been a learning experience, but I'm just saying that if, if I think I could have pushed the car more, I don't think it would have gotten me that much extra speed. Because this car just doesn't react to that. It doesn't react to being pushed. It's very much within its limits, and just be careful. Anyway, less rambling. I'm now coming around the final corner with a healthy lead, crossing the line. There's a guy with the checkered flag. Well done, Dan. Great win. You deserve that today. And possibly one of the least exciting races I've ever recorded on this channel. <laughs> But making our way through the traffic was fun. Making our way through the traffic was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that a lot. And that battle for first, obviously we made a pretty terrible start right at the beginning of the video. Dropped down to third, managed to get back to second. It took a while to get back to first, but we got there in the end. Then the rest of the race ends been pretty much plain sailing. Just honing in on the, you know, getting the optimum line, getting used to the handling got plenty of fuel left. I reckon we could do another 10 laps easy. Another 20 minutes, I'd say, in this car, so... And that's on qualifying mode as well. Wow. Turn the fuel down. Drive a little bit more conservatively. You might be able to get an hour and a half out of this car, which... Compared to the LMP2s, you're looking at 45 minutes. You can, you can go twice as long in this car. Anyway, guys. Mostly an enjoyable race. I hope you guys... You know, you found some value in this video. Whether it be watching me drive the McLaren Senna GTR around in circles for an hour, through traffic, or maybe you just really enjoy watching people drive our factory too. If you're still here and you're still watching, whatever reason that you stayed until the end, or maybe you skipped ahead until the end, in which case, oh, minus 10 points. <laughs> minus 10 points for you. I still like you, but you're not a hardcore. <laughs> No, nah, only joking guys, I really appreciate every single view, every single like, every single comment I get on any of the videos I record on this channel. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and uh, yeah, I don't think I'll drive this car again soon. I think I might try the Aston Martin GTE soon. And I've got some unfinished business with the USF 17, there's a few circuits I want to take that to as well. And I want to do races on the Nordschleife. I want to ride, you know, I want to, I want to drive the Nordschleife. That's an amazing circuit. And there's so much new content in race room racing experience. And, and, I bought Dirt Rally 2.0 and I haven't even tried it yet. I haven't even started it. So, oh, guys. <laughs> so much channel coming on this content. So much content coming on this channel. Blah. Yep. Brisbane temperature here is soaring up to the 40s. I'm feeling it in this room can't concentrate. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to wrap things up. Take care of yourselves, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.